Let's read from Psalm 121 today. Psalm 121. It says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. Look up, your help comes from the Lord. It says in Psalm 42, Why so downcast, O my soul? Whenever we face a challenging situation, whenever there's a difficulty, whenever we get news that's unsettling, It literally affects our physical posture. There's a weight that we take on. You can see it when someone enters a room that you know well. You know they don't look like, they're not acting like they normally do. They're they're typically slumped down. And and one of the, the indicators that someone is really facing a difficult time is they don't make eye contact. Have you experienced that before? someone that you love and you recognize that something's going on and all of a sudden they're looking down and perhaps you'll say, what's, what's going on in, in your life? But Psalm 42 captures this well and other places in scripture that, that downcast, you, you, you literally are casting your, your glance downward. You just got this look to you, this feeling to you. And guys, we've got an emoji for this, don't we? Have you seen this emoji? Maybe you've used it before. Oh, look at that. That just so well captures the idea of being downcast. And so I think it's fitting in Psalm 121 when it, when it uh, starts talking about God being our help. I love that it says, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? As, as soon as we uh, take our gaze from this, this downcast, almost looking at our feet, looking inward, and we begin to look up, that's the beginning of inviting God to intervene in our situation. Several things happen when uh, we look up. Um, the first thing is when you look up, you look beyond yourself. Look beyond yourself. Um, you know, even if Uh, you were in need of assistance and you weren't looking to God, when you look beyond yourself, you're inviting, is there help on the horizon? What could come um, to help me in my situation? Perhaps it's there. When you look up, you're, you're looking at something or someone that's bigger than yourself. So it's just this, wow. And in this, David looked to the mountains and he was probably blown away like all of us are by their beauty, their majesty, their size, their scale. But when when we look up, we're literally gazing at something that is bigger than we are, and certainly God is bigger than our circumstances. Amen? And when we look up, we see things from a different perspective. One of the most important things that when, when we're facing difficulty or trouble, when we feel downcast and inward, Perhaps you're like me, but when that starts happening, I just start thinking the same negative thoughts over and over again. Really not doing anything to solve the situation or, or help me. It just, it just becomes this, this myoptic view of my circumstance and how heavy it is and how I don't know what I'm going to do. And you just, ah, just such a, but by looking up, you begin to see things from a different point of view because you're no longer looking at yourself. In fact, it says in James, whenever you face trials of many kinds, I can't stand that it says that. Why does it say you will never face trials of many kinds, right? But when you face trials of many kinds, because that's just what happens, right? It talks about, you know, by being faithful, you persevere through that, right? And that builds your character and your faith. But then it says at the end of that, if any of you lacks wisdom, ask God and he will give it to you. 
And that wisdom, when you, when you dig into the text, that wisdom actually means like a bird's eye view, that it's possible that, that God in his uh, uh, wisdom can see beyond your circumstance. And so when you look up, think about someone looking back down at you from the mountains. Not only can they see where you are on your journey right there in that moment, they can see where you've traveled from and where you're going at the same time. And so when God looks down from heaven, when we're facing a difficult circumstance, uh, can I tell you good news? He knows our future. Amen. And he's going to protect us along that journey. When I was praying for you this morning, praying over this message, the Holy Spirit just uh, dropped the story again in my heart that's recorded in Mark uh, chapter 6 about um, Jesus calming the storm. And whenever we hear a teaching like this from Psalm 121, that our help comes from the Lord, if, if we're honest, there's a little bit of angst, and it's because there's times where it feels like God doesn't help us. And so we're like, okay, this is great. You know, he's, not, he's never going to slumber or sleep. He's going to watch over me. We're going to dig a little bit deeper in this passage in a few moments. But if we're honest, we're like, hey, you know, I've had situations and God, God wasn't there right when I needed him or, you know. And I, what I love about the Bible is the Bible is so real. It doesn't shy away from difficult topics. It doesn't sugarcoat things. It, it's, it's not just making these grandiose statements of faith. It's a, it's a story, a history of substance. And so in Mark chapter 6, the disciples get in the boat. Jesus joins them. They're crossing a lake. There's this great storm. And if you've ever been on a boat in a storm, it is scary, even when the waves are small. And uh, the recording says that the waves were so great that water starts to come into the boat, and they're nervous, and they think they're going to drown. And Jesus is sleeping in the boat. And they wake him up, and they say, and this is just such an honest statement, are you not concerned that we're going to drown? Have you been there before? God, I'm, I'm facing a storm right now. Wake up! You know, I need you. Are you not concerned that I'm going to drown? And, of course, Jesus wakes up and he speaks to the storm and, and the waters are stilled. Amen. And then he gives a little bit of, of a lesson about faith. See, we, we may not always like God's timing, but can I tell you there's two ways to approach life. It's either to face that storm without Jesus or to invite Jesus to be in that boat. Because everyone is going to face trials of many kinds. And maybe you could make the case that you're frustrated that life has a storm anyway. And so you're mad at God because life's full of storms. But I don't know about you. If it's a guarantee that I'm going to face storms in life, I want Jesus in my boat. And if Jesus needs me to wake him up every once in a while, I'll wake him up, right? What I do know, and I've experienced in my life many, many times, he calms storms. He is faithful, and he delivers the help that is needed. So Psalm 121, uh, verse number two, the psalmist cried, My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. God's help is tailor-made. If you're a maker or a creator. I like to do uh, woodworking. I really enjoy that, and uh, I, I like painting and those type of things. Whenever you, you design something, there's a lot of thought that goes into it. In fact, oftentimes I'll think about things for weeks or days. If I'm One of the things I like about woodworking is you have to think several moves ahead and then kind of come back, else you'll get yourself in a bind. And I love just the active mind that goes into that and designing something with intentionality. Uh, God is your creator. You are his child. He knows you by name. He, he knows the number of hairs on uh, your head. 
And I've got good news today. The one that's created you, the one who knows you, he knows exactly the help that you need. In junior high, I was in home economics. We did some cooking and some sewing. I sewed myself a pair of boxer shorts. That was the class project. First time behind a sewing machine. I was kind of proud. I actually had something that looked like shorts. Uh, the teacher was out for the day. I don't know what I was thinking in junior high, but I thought these are too short, okay? And so I get the scissors out, right? Because I don't know how to hem my boxer shorts. She's gone, I'll hem them myself. I got a pair of scissors. I'm in middle school, you know, I've got time on my hands. And I cut those shorts. I cut the crotch right out of them. I turned my shorts into a skirt. I tell that story and my wife says, how short did you want those things, right? I was not a tailor in that moment. A tailor makes something that's custom and it fits exactly, it's, it's perfect. And, and whenever we try to do things our own, when we try to solve our own situation, it's like taking a pair of scissors and cutting the crotch out of a pair of boxer shorts, right? Because we don't know how to do it right. But God, our creator, the one who's made us, his help is tailor-made for us. When my mom got diagnosed with cancer when I was... Uh, a senior in high school, I can just still remember those moments were, were so confusing, so hard, so difficult. Just, just praying together as a family. It just, she was going to all these doctor's appointments. We're trying to understand what the news was. It felt so overwhelming. And I was, I was praying just at my bed one night, just crying out to God. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and just said, She's going to be all right. And I, I can't even, like, the, it's not the, the statement. It's like right here. He, he met me at my deepest emotional need and delivered the exact help that I needed. His word, his promise. She's been cancer-free for 25 years. But, but, but it was that, that God delivered in a tailor-made way as my creator the help that I needed exactly when I needed him to speak. And that's what God does. I love uh, the, the passage of, of Scripture in, in Ephesians chapter 3, this prayer that Paul prays. It's so rich. But verse 16, it says, I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. That's the God that we serve. You will face troubles of many kinds. I can guarantee you that you've faced waves in the past and you're going to face them in the future. But what I do know is that God will give you strength by his Holy Spirit in his inner being. It's going to be exactly what you need. You know, it's, a, it's amazing all the helps that we have today. Um, it, it's amazing the ingenuity of humanity. God uh, has given us that same gift. We are creators, and we're able to, to create things. And we understand a lot about the human body. We understand a lot about the mind. And can I tell you, take full advantage of the helps that exist today. Don't, don't feel like if you see a mental health counselor or you see a physician that somehow you're not trusting in the Lord. The Lord has given us those gifts, right? The disciples were in a boat, and that boat was uh, created by human hands, right? That was a human invention so that they could be out on the water and catch more fish. And so taking advantage of that help is something that we want to do. But in the midst of taking advantage of the God-given gifts of what, what we have available to us, God is always going to do something exceedingly above whatever we could ask or imagine that Taylor made help exactly for you. 
Verse number three, it says, He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. God watches over you. And boy, I, I can tell you it's encouraging today to know that he never slumbers nor sleeps. Uh, this, this phrase, he will not let your foot slip, fits so well with this moment. If you've ever uh, done some hiking in a kind of a dry, arid uh, climate, you know that how easily your foot can slip. Family and I just took a trip out to Zion National Park in Utah and just really enjoyed the beautiful scenery, God's creation, and went on these hikes. But because there wasn't much rain there, it just all of a sudden your, your foot on the dry ground can just slip. And I've, I've been to, my wife and I have been to Israel and had that same experience. So if you're climbing up, uh, you know, kind of something steep, it can be really dangerous, especially if you're on a footpath and in just a moment, in a blink of the eye, when you least expect it, the wrong foot slip could be detrimental to your well-being, right? Could end your life. So as, as, as uh, David and others who tended sheep in this kind of climate and often had to climb up to different places and travel to, to green pastures and those things, this idea that God would keep their foot from slipping was so important, but it's the timeliness of that. It's just if, if his protector, if his creator, if the one who gives him help isn't watching with careful eye every single moment, if God just turns away for a second, well, that could be the exact se second that his foot slips, right? And he faces danger. So what he's communicating is God's careful watching eye, a God who never slumbers nor sleeps, even if I need to travel or journey at night, he's going to take care of me. He's going to watch over me. God's help is timely. Boy, uh, there are so many moments when I wish God would intervene at a different time. Are you with me on that? And at the same time, I can say wholeheartedly that God's help is always timely. How is that? Well, it's always in hindsight that we recognize why God chooses to intervene in a certain moment. And we recognize that he was doing something bigger, something beyond ourselves, or something to help us grow and mature and develop faith and perseverance. And it's, a, it's just like there's these acute moments you're like, God, I needed you to show up yesterday, right? And I'm still waiting for you to show up today. But, but when he shows up tomorrow, it's going to be at the exact right time. Imagine uh, God's perspective. He cares deeply about you as an individual, but there's a lot more that's happening on this planet than you as an individual. And so oftentimes, God is working uh, together things for, for his good and for his glory. Well, I would have loved it if my, mom, if my mom would have been healed from cancer that night that I prayed for her, but guess what? She went through chemotherapy treatments, she went through this horrific journey. I can remember them, uh, doctors coming into our home and, and putting uh, a nail in the wall and hanging an IV bed, bag above her bed, right? I, I wanted God to show up yesterday in that moment. But can I tell you, uh, not only did, did men and women of faith minister to my mom calling at the exact right time on the phone to encourage her in her inner being, but my mom walked alongside of other people who are facing a similar circumstance, men and women who were far from Jesus, and she was able to minister to them in their time of need by the Holy Spirit. And so God used her life to invest in others. And so oftentimes, it, his timing is more to do than just with the need that we face. And then we get the, just the depth of character that happens in us um, when, when he meets that need, when we are faithful, when we persevere. 
There's a humility that happens. Uh, dare I say it, but the Bible talks about there's, there's a, a, a fellowship in suffering. We begin to understand what Jesus went through on a whole nother level. The men and women of faith, and we, we, we have this recorded in the book of Hebrews, they faced horrible suffering. It wasn't just trials, they faced suffering, but they were faithful to the end for the glory of God. God's help is timely. I want to read uh, this from Psalm 46. Verse 1, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in times of trouble. Uh, have you ever had a moment where you uh, are waiting for God to show up? He doesn't show up. You decide to take things into your own hands, but the decisions you make aren't uh, in accordance with God's will. See, not only do we try to solve things our own way, but oftentimes we're just trying to numb the pain. And that's when we turn to sin. Sometimes that's addictive behaviors or be, you know, doing things that we know that we shouldn't do. But it's not that we're trying to be wild or rebellious. It's just a reality. Sometimes um, things like alcohol, sex, drugs, shopping, whatever it may be, that we kind of dig our own hole because we're just trying to numb the pain. We just need an escape, right? Isn't that just real? And once we do that, and we realize that, that our situation hasn't gotten better, but it's actually gotten worse, then these feelings set in, and there's just so much guilt and shame that happens. And all of a sudden, you, you find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time, and the conclusion that you draw is that God is upset with you. And you're reminded by scriptures like um, he's attentive to the prayers of the righteous and you feel unrighteous. I've got good news for you today. Um, God is, is not going to turn his back on you because you turn your back on him. He understands uh, how hard it is to be a human in today's world. He understands um, the reality of sin and weakness. Uh, the premise here already is that all have fallen short of the glory of God, right? That's the resting place. He's not surprised that, that any of his children would get caught up or entangled by sin. That's why he sent Jesus. And Jesus extends forgiveness time and time again. And God does not withhold his help from, from um, uh, sons and daughters who choose to go their own path. If, we, if that was the case, we wouldn't have the story that Jesus leaves the 99 sheep to go find the one. What does the one do? It wanders off from the rest of the sheep, right? From the safe pasture. No, Jesus sacrifices himself to go after the one. And even if you find yourself in the wrong place at the wrong time, can I tell you that God will be an ever-present help in times of trouble? Amen? And it's just, you're even more blown away by his grace, how amazing his help is, because not only will he deliver you in a timely way from the actual challenge that you face, whatever it is, whatever's causing you to be downcast, but he's also going to deliver you from the hole that you dug for yourself, amen? He's going to deliver you from both of those things, and he's going to do it at the exact right time. And you can trust him in that. Verse number five. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day or the moon by night. Uh, I love this image, um, this idea that God would be at our right hand. When the Bible talks about being at the right hand, it's communicating this idea of strength or power. At the same time, it's communicating loyalty. And so it's saying that God in his strength and power is going to be loyal to you. He's going to be at your right hand. And then we've got this, this added uh, imagery of he's right there at your right hand and he's the shade that protects you from the scorching sun. Life is full of scorching suns. 
a sun that is so hot it seems like the fire of hell. If you've ever walked through or seen someone you love walk through a disease, like a diagnosis, in those moments, the sun is like a scorching hell. But the word of God says that he will be at your right hand. He will be the shade in the midst of that scorching heat. God's help is trustworthy. Amen. He's going to be right there with you through the valley. Uh, scripture all throughout talks about uh, men and, and women who walk through really difficult situations, and yet the Lord was there with them in the fire. I think of Daniel in the lion's den and this, this wild story where Daniel is faithful to God. And this decree goes up, and, and, and he's going to be faithful to God no matter what, and, and he's going to pray, and, and he gets thrown into that lion's uh, den. What happens when he's in that lion's den? The angel of the Lord is right there with him, right? And it shuts the mouths of the lion. Oftentimes, God doesn't remove us from harm, but he's with us in the midst of harm. I, um, I want to read a scripture verse today, or not a scripture verse, a, a quote from Charles Spurgeon, because I think it's, it's so fitting. Uh, it's something he wrote called Morning and Evening, and there's actually more to this, but I want to uh, read a portion of it. It says, Blessed is the fact that Christians can rejoice even in their deepest distress. Although trouble may surround them, they still sing, and like many birds, they sing best in their cages. The waves may roll over them, but their soul soon rises to the surface, and they see the light of God's countenance. They have a buoyancy about them which keeps their head above the water and helps them to sing amid the tempest, God is with me still. To whom shall the glory be given? O oh, to Jesus. It is all by Jesus. Trouble does not necessarily bring consolation with it to the believer, but the presence of the Son of God in the fiery furnace with him fills his heart with joy. God is trustworthy. He will be the shade at your right hand. When you are in your darkest hour, the Lord is going to help you in that moment. He's going to be there with you. Um, listen, there's nothing like the promise of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus gave us. He says he will walk with you and he will uh, live in you. That's a beautiful promise. What we don't have is a promise from Scripture that we will never face troubles or trials. I'd love for that to be the case. But what we do have is this promise that the Lord will be with us whatever situation we face. I don't know what you're contending with today. Perhaps you're in the heat of the battle Experiencing the scorching sun. I want to remind you that the Lord is with you. He's going to provide the shade that you need. He's going to minister to you by his Holy Spirit. Perhaps you can relate with taking matters into your own hands and you feel like you're just kind of in the wrong place right now. You're making decisions that are far from God's plan for you. Can I tell you that if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin. Jesus came into the world not to condemn it, but to save it. So he reaches his hand down to you in that miry pit, and he'll lift you out in a second. You just have to call on his name. God will help you. God is with you.